going to be talking about uh, heart maps today. Um, there are actually hundreds of kinds of maps in the world. There are road maps, weather maps, political maps, constellation maps. In fact, we kind of live in this hyper map era right now. We have Google Maps, we have Waze, we have Find a Friend. In fact, we can locate ourselves or our loved ones if we get lost, as long as we have a good cellular signal. But have you ever heard of a heart map? Not the medical kind of heart map where doctors map the inside of your heart to detect disease, but the kind of heart map that reveals our stories, experiences, um, people we love that we've stored inside of our hearts throughout our lives. A heart map is an emotional and visual tool where we use writing and words and drawing to map what we care about and who we are. So this is my heart map, and on the very bottom of the heart map, um, I have my creek that meandered behind my house when I grew up in Virginia, and this is where we would go to escape family drama, we would look um, underneath the rocks to find crayfish. And then up towards the center of my heart, um, there's a lock diary that I got when I was 10 years old for a birthday present. And that's when I first became a writer. So I've mapped my heart dozen of, dozens of times. And the interesting thing about it is that every time I map it, it's always different. And I'm always surprised by what emerges. This is a heart map uh, by a young woman who, in the center of her heart, she drew a basket of apples. And around the basket, she wrote the words, ordinary things, extraordinary things. And in the very, very left-hand top uh, of her heart map, she drew this kind of jellyfish-like creature with tentacles creeping down into her heart. And if you look beneath the tentacles are the words, cancer loss. How many of us have experienced sickness and loss and heartbreak and knows what it feels like to have these kind of symbolic tentacles creeping into our lives, into our hearts? Heart maps can also be um, an impetus for social change. This is the Be the Change You Wish to See in the World heart map, uh, created by a young man who had a lot of concerns about the world and wanted to change the world in many ways. And so some of his concerns are children who have no homes, children who um, are abused, and so many other things. I've introduced heart maps all over the world in partnership with an organization called Lit World. And this organization um, goes around the world and promotes global literacy. So this heart map is created by a girl in a little village in India. And she just mapped with raw, uh, drawing and writing the things that she really cared about that are on her heart. And this heart map was created by a boy in Rwanda. It was kind of a family-oriented heart map. And even though we might not be able to read all the words of these global heart maps, we understand them from the colors, from the drawings, but also because the language of the heart is a common language that we all share. Uh, once I had a student who had emigrated from Mexico to the United States, and on his heart map, he drew a simple line down the middle, like the border he had to cross. His split heart made him, kind of inspired him to write um, a poem called My Latin Heart, My American Heart. My heart, it's falling. Como un patala la rosa en la tierra. Like rose petals falling on the ground. My heart, it's going crazy. Como un loco sin rumbo. Like feeling crazy without direction. My heart is scared. Como un niño sin sus padres. Like a child without parents. My heart, it's lonely. Como una telarana en mi cuarto. Like a spider web in my room. My heart, it's in love. Con la niña que nunca vendrá. Like the girl who will never come. But I guess if I try my best, my corazón se curará. My heart will heal. Even if you don't consider yourself a writer, often the pulse and beat of a heart map can be transferred into poetry and prose. So let me tell you how I came up with the idea of heart maps. 
I come from a family of map makers. My sister and two cousins work for the National Geographic Society、um, as cartographers, and my grandmother thought it would be a great job for a woman,、uh, for anybody, but for a woman. And so she said,、um, "I will help、uh, pay your way through college if you become a cartographer." But I didn't want to be a cartographer. I wasn't interested in cartography, or so I thought. So even though it was tempting, I said no, and I became a poet and a writer and a teacher of writing instead. But what I didn't realize was that map making, cartography, would make its way back into my life eventually. So, years later, as a visiting writer in a school, the kids were struggling to find something to write about that they truly cared about. So, in desperation, I said, "Just draw a heart on your papers and just fill it with whatever you love, whatever you stored in your heart that matters to you." And they were amazing. These heart maps. They drew and wrote about baby brothers and sisters being born. They、um, talked about、uh, parents who had passed away, about moving from one school to another and feeling lonely and having no friends, of loving to look at the stars at night, and、um, so many other things. And it was then that I first realized that heart maps are a powerful tool to help us not just find what we love in the world and what's important to us. But to give us insights into ourselves.、Um, so often, I think、um, we realize that、um, that you know, when I when I when I first started doing heart maps, what I realized was that I became the, a heart cartographer,、um, and so my career in cartography was born many years later.、Um, Let me tell you some interesting things about mapping. Humans have made maps since the beginning of civilization.、Um, we are map makers because we love to understand the world around us. We have a need to understand the world around us and our place in it, and we map not just things that we know, but we like to go beyond and map what we don't know. The earliest map. Was actually painted on the caves in、uh, Lascaux, France, in 16,000 years BC, and it wasn't of the earth; it was of the night sky. Early maps also have the words、um, "terra incognita" written on them, meaning unknown lands, and these were places that had not been explored, and so therefore they were unknown. In the 19th century, terra incognita disappeared from all the maps on the earth. Because every place had been explored, but I think there is still a lot of terra incognita, a lot of unknowns, especially when it comes to understanding the human psyche. We are constantly trying to figure ourselves out. The Dalai Lama recently commissioned an online of atlas, an online atlas of of human emotions. He said, in order to find the new world, we needed a map. And in order for us to find a calm mind, we need a map of our emotions. So the goal is to map our emotions and then the possible responses they could trigger, to make our awareness so that we have choices when we react instead of reacting in kind of unconscious and impulsive ways. We all make mental maps of our lives. We might not be aware of what those maps look like. When my husband and I were traveling in Ireland, we were traveling, driving in the countryside, looking for an ancient site called the Hill of Tara.、Um, and we were so lost that our GPS was broken, and we were driving around. And we saw a woman walking along the side of the road. And we pulled up beside her and said, "Do you know how to get to the Hill of Tara?" And she blurted out that wonderful Irish expression, "Jesus, Mary, and Joseph," meaning that we weren't just lost, but we were hopelessly lost. So she directed us to the Hill of Tara, not by street names, but by the signpost etched on her memory. So you follow the River Boyne, you pass Fagan's Pub, and then there's a grassy hill on your left, and you turn there, and so on and so on. And we found our way to the Hill of Tara. The map that she had made in her mind was not just to direct lost tourists like us, but it was a multi-dimensional map layered with stories and feelings and experiences of her life, but also of the countryside around the Hill of Tara. So we all make these inner maps, and not of directions and streets, but 
emotional maps that are imprinted on our hearts. The process of heart mapping reveals those imprints to us. We live in a time of information and image bombardment and where the truth is often up for grabs. When we map our hearts, we find a pathway into what we know is true and what we believe. When we map our hearts, we find clarity, and when we have clear hearts, we have clear minds. All of us are cartographers of our own lives. Just like a geographical map can guide us from point A to point B, with help us from getting lost, a heart map can help us go inwards and to understand our terra incognita, make our unknowns known. And in that process, help us navigate our lives so that we can live our lives with more compassion, more meaning, and more purpose. Thank you. Thank you.